Hello and welcome to our tutorial on the anatomy of a sock for beginner knitters or beginner sock knitters. So to get started we're going to talk a little bit about the yarn needed to knit socks. Most sock yarns will need to have a bit of nylon in them for strength and for stretch and to mean that they continue fitting and looking nice after many repeated washings. This yarn was a skein of the undyed yarn available on the Laughing Hen site, dyed with food colouring. If you'd like to figure out how to dye your own yarn using things that you have at home, please check our YouTube channel for the tutorial. The second thing that you'll need to consider are the types of needles you like to use. Many knitters prefer DPNs or double pointed needles, in which the stitches are split evenly across all the needles. Many knitters also like using the magic loop method on a long circular needle. Still more, enjoy using these very short needles, very short circular needles available from Addy. A lot of that is personal preference as to choosing which needles you like. Most patterns are adaptable no matter which needles you choose. Let's talk a bit about this sock that I knitted a while back. This sock was knitted from the toe up, beginning here, and ending at the cuff at the top. When knitting toe up, there are several different methods for knitting a toe before you knit the rest of the sock. In many cases that will be detailed in whatever pattern you've chosen to use. As you will also see, the bottom of the sock is knitted in stockinette or stocking stitch. That's for a nice comfortable sock that doesn't rub. That's common with most sock knitting patterns. You'll notice that many sock patterns have a bit of cabling or texture or some sort of interest on the top. Not only does it look nice, but in many cases it can help the sock fit a bit better. This sock was knitted with a heel flap and gusset. As you can see here, my heel flap was knitted with a slip stitch pattern that helps the sock have more strength at the back where it needs it the most. And this little triangle here with these increases is called the gusset and that's for helping fit the sock around the instep of your foot. Of course here is the leg of the sock and the ribbed cuff. So that was how this sock was knit but there are many socks which are knit from the top down including many beginners patterns. If you begin at the top down your normal long tail cast on would suffice but if knitting from the toe up you need to think about the cast off choice that you choose and maybe choose a slightly stretchier option. When knitting cuff down, you begin here and you knit until the end, ending with the toe and grafting the stitches together using the Kitchener stitch. If you didn't know, the Kitchener stitch was invented by Lord Kitchener in World War I to help prevent the inside seam on a sock that was causing many soldiers on the front line a lot of pain and discomfort. And the Kitchener stitch is now the standard when it comes to grafting stitches together. There are many different ways to knit a heel, but we will talk about a couple. As I mentioned, this is a heel flap and gusset here, which is common in many beginner's patterns. Another common option for a heel is a short row heel. If this were a short row heel, it would look a little bit more like a triangle with a line in the middle. There are many different methods for a short row heel, and figuring out which one you like the most is basically just down to personal preference and what you feel fits your foot the best. I personally like the heel flap and gusset, which is why that's what I knit. Another option for a heel is called the afterthought heel, in which you knit the entire sock without a heel, and then you remove waist yarn that you place while knitting, you remove waist yarn and you pick up those stitches and you knit a heel. And then you graft those heel stitches together, also using the Kitchener stitch, like you would when knitting top down and ending at the toe. So the Kitchener stitch is obviously your go-to for grafting stitches on a sock, because it leaves no seam. So that's basically what you need to know to get started with the anatomy of a sock. We will have further tutorials talking about different techniques, and we hope you watch out for those. Thanks for watching!